Hi there, and welcome to Excellent Politics Briefings. Here, you will get up-to-date information about international relations, world events, and geopolitics that are shaping contemporary society. This hour on Focus is focused to how Saudi Arabia's ability to get into a defense agreement with the United States is impeded by the conflict between Palestine and Israel. As we take you down this trail, just sit there and don't move an inch. Less than a month prior to the radical Hamas attack on October 7, which turned everything around, Israel and Saudi Arabia were in the midst of negotiations to restore diplomatic relations. Riyadh paid a hefty price for peace after decades of tense relations. Not only did the United States offer security guarantees, but they also demanded access to civilian nuclear technology and minimal Israeli concessions over Palestinian statehood. Even with the Biden administration's recent push, an agreement of this kind is still a long way off. Even if Saudi officials were interested in speaking with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict would probably prevent them from negotiating a sustainable peace while Arab publics, including their own, are incensed about the humanitarian catastrophe that Israel's military campaign has caused in Gaza. Negotiations between the United States and Israel may never take place, but they are still a valuable source of potential leverage that Washington officials believe might lead to both greater Israeli concessions on Palestinian statehood and a ceasefire in Gaza. Before we go any further though, if you're enjoying this briefing, would you please like and subscribe to this channel by doing so. By doing so, it will be allowing you to, to know what you like and enabling you to receive new video updates whenever they are uploaded on this channel. I'm grateful. Now let's get going. The Biden administration would not sign a defense deal with Saudi Arabia, according to U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, unless both the country and Israel agree to normalize relations. He insisted that you can't disentangle one piece from the others. Sullivan shot down reports that the Biden administration was considering a bilateral agreement with the kingdom if Israel refused to make concessions to the Palestinians during an interview at the FT Weekend Festival on Saturday. As part of its efforts to secure a lasting peace in the Middle East, the Biden administration has been pressuring Riyadh to establish formal diplomatic connections with Israel through a three-way agreement. This comes following Hamas's strike on October 7, which set off the almost seven-month-long conflict in Gaza. It seeks to persuade Israel to make major concessions to the Palestinians by leveraging the possibility of the kingdom, which has long been Israel's greatest prize, and other Muslim countries normalizing relations. However, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has always opposed any efforts to resolve the long-running Israeli-Palestinian conflict by creating two states. The integrated vision entails meaningful steps on behalf of the Palestinian people, along with normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia, and a bilateral understanding between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, Sullivan stated, Everything needs to come together. One component cannot be separated from the others. According to Sullivan, Joe Biden planned to reveal in public the path to a more peaceful region. I do anticipate hearing more about the path that we think could result in a more secure Israel and a more peaceful region in the coming months from the president and other of us, Sullivan stated. In the end, the decision to pursue that course or not will rest with the Israeli leadership and, to be honest, the Israeli people. All we can do is figure out what we think makes sense and try to get as many countries in the region on board with it, and then present it, he continued. A deal that would have allowed Washington to support Riyadh's civilian nuclear ambitions and seal a defense pact with it in exchange for Israel making concessions to the Palestinians was being worked out by the Biden administration in an effort to get Saudi Arabia to normalize relations with Israel before October 7. Although that process was upset by Hamas' attack and Israel's counteroffensive in Gaza, the U.S. and Saudi Arabia have continued to explore a possible agreement as part of larger post-war measures to ensure peace in the area. Nonetheless, Saudi Arabia has made it abundantly evident that on October 7, it would want Israel to grant the Palestinians even more substantial concessions, stating that it will need to witness irreversible steps toward the creation of a Palestinian state intended to put pressure on Netanyahu's administration, reports this week that the U.S. and Saudi Arabia were thinking of pursuing a bilateral arrangement if Israel refused to take significant measures toward a Palestinian state. This week, Prince Faisal bin Farhan, the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia, stated that Washington and Riyadh were very close, reaching a bilateral agreement on the U.S. portion of a deal. However, he emphasized that there still needs to be truly a pathway to a Palestinian state that is credible and irreversible. However, Netanyahu brags that he has been able to successfully obstruct any movement towards a two-state solution for years, despite strong pressure from far-right elements of his governing coalition to demand no concessions from the Palestinians. While Sullivan was in Cairo, where mediators are trying to persuade Hamas to accept an agreement that would result in a truce and the release of hostages held in Gaza, CIA Chief Bill Burns was also speaking. 
In order to negotiate a long-term ceasefire, mediators want to mediate a six-week initial ceasefire. While U.S. officials have applauded Israel for compromising on the parameters of a compromise, Netanyahu maintains that he would go on the attack in Rafah, the southern Gazan city where over a million Palestinians have taken refuge. Arab nations have been debating with Washington for months their post-war vision, which calls for the U.S. and other Western powers to acknowledge and support a Palestinian state, its full UNA membership, and the appointment of a new Palestinian leadership to oversee Gaza and the occupied West Bank. This concludes our discussion for the day. I appreciate you visiting, and I hope the video was enjoyable. Please subscribe to our channel for more and relevant videos. Please subscribe, like, and share. For now, goodbye.